So now we know how the browser works and we can load our sounds into machine. Let's have a look at the parameters of a sound. Obviously the machine library comes with plenty of ready-made sounds that are perfectly good to use in productions, but it's always good to put your creative input into sounds and mold them into something very personal. So let's go through some of the sounds and see the anatomy of how they are made and how the parameters are presented to us on the hardware and of course re then reflected on the software page. Um, you'll see I've created a project here. We're in the user section of the browser. So if I double click there on my Sonic Academy project, you'll see I've quickly made a project. Let's just loop this so that we can hear most of the drums all at once. There you'll see I've created a very basic loop made up of four different groups, drums, bass, tonal and ride and we're going to go through the anatomy of some of these sounds so let's mute the rest of the drums let's focus in on a kick sound let's solo the drums first of all and then let's go further down and solo the kick so here let's highlight the kick pad and we can scroll along you'll see that the kick is actually made up of quite a few components here. First of all we have machine zone drum synthesizer. You'll see a, a small kick drum there to show that we are in the kick engine and if we scroll along using this button we can move along the signal path. We next have a maximizer, an EQ, a saturator and a limiter and now you'll see down here the number of pages that we can scroll through. That's the pages of parameters for each individual section of the signal path. So of the kick synthesizer alone we have three pages of parameters and these are all conveniently located just on top of these controls and obviously the controls are for the parameters above. Now here, this is how we scroll through the various pages. You'll see here that the leftmost arrow is grayed out. That means we can't page any further to the left. So we are essentially at the beginning of the page parameters. And we use this arrow to scroll to the right. And when, obviously when you come to the end of your number of page parameters, your right hand side arrow gets grayed out. That's all very, very straightforward and self-explanatory. So let's go back to the beginning of the page parameters and let's go through some of these. I'm not going to go through every single parameter for each part of the sound because there are literally hundreds of parameters that can go towards constructing a sound. And first of all, we have our kick drum engine and here we have some names um, which are fairly indicative of the kind of kick sound that we are starting off with for example Tronic that tells me that it's it's going to be quite an unnatural or more of a digital uh, kick drum engine sound whereas something like Maple tells me that it's perhaps emulating a acoustic kick sound for example so you have your various sounds, there's bold, snappy, obviously if we go to sub, it's, it's all very self-explanatory. Let's go back to our Tronic sound. And next parameter is tuning. And uh, this is very conveniently put in hertz actually. So we can go right down to 31 hertz for our kick sound or up to a very unnatural kind of bouncy 55 hertz. And the good thing about having the tuning for your kick drum is for those producers who really like to get into matching the pitch of your kick drum with the root note of the key that you're composing in, harmonic mixing as it were, uh, that's very useful for those producers who like to do that. Uh, next we have decay which is obviously fairly self-explanatory, we can get a, a huge long decay on that kick sound or we can really shorten it up and we have a pitch bend here 
Um, obviously a lot of drum sounds, the pitch goes down as the sound decays. So obviously you can really exaggerate that effect by putting the bend right up to 100%. Um, here we have an impact percentage at the moment the impact is 100% and um, if I turn it down you'll hear exactly what impact means it's perhaps not so self-explanatory but it's obvious to me that impact kind of emphasizes the top end of the attack kind of element to the initial kick sound so let's quickly page along and you'll see our next page of parameters is for distortion and there we have again four lots of parameters gain tone bias mix I'm not going to go through all of these They're they're all fairly self-explanatory here we can whack up the gain distortion and page along again and we have um, a scale velocity which is related to the MIDI velocity how hard we punched in our original sound so you can see straight away just by using the very first element how intuitive and very self-explanatory the parameters are presented in machine and you'll see obviously that everything is reflected in the software when I page back you'll see the software goes to reflect that and everything can be adjusted with the mouse exactly the same we have these virtual knobs here for our tuning and we can go on to our advanced and modulation section that's how they've labeled those um, that's an extra description actually that isn't available on the hardware as far as I can see but apart from that it's all identical um, but let's just um, go through some of these other elements in the signal path just to completely cover how the parameters are presented in machine so let's go along to our next element in the signal path which is maximizer here you'll see we have this is one of two pages of parameters so the first page is the depth of our maximizer let's whack that up and then we have some kind of curve and a turbo effect which I sh should imagine exaggerates it at a high curve that's exactly what it does and then we have an input here which I'm going to cover when we come to compression because this input we can set up some side chaining side chaining is obviously a very important part of modern music production so I'll cover that in more depth when we come to a more conventional dynamics plugin such as a compressor here you have your gain you can have a filter with a center frequency that's all for the maximizer we'll quickly go along these are all very self-explanatory here we have a EQ so we have two pages we have our low low mids high mids and highs um, followed by a saturator with just one page of parameters and finally we have our limiter and of course importantly we can move on to our free slot so if we're still not satisfied with the amount of elements we have we can keep on adding using our browser and a plugin as we learned before in uh, the previous part of this tutorial so parameters are fairly straightforward to use as you can see but the options available do vary depending on whether we're working with instruments sounds samples or effects as you would expect I'm going to replicate the common effect of side chaining using the kick drum as the source which is going to lower the shaker sound every time the kick hits so let's take our drum group out of solo mode and hear the entire kit again. Let's activate the shaker pad and have a look at the parameters that show up for this particular sound. We can see our shaker has four parts to its signal path, beginning life as a snare from machine's drum modeling synth. The snare engine has a clap option which is then frequency modulated in the second slot. You'll notice the parameters for the snare modelling are almost identical to the kick modelling we looked at previously. Except there is a room parameter for adding some ambient reverb and when we scroll through to the next page the distortion section is not available to us. We still have the velocity scaling on the third page which I find useful 
as I like to have my drums hit at the same velocity no matter how hard or soft I play the pads, and then I can fine tune the velocity afterwards. Let's move along the signal path. There's our FM effect. and a beat delay. You'll see all the parameters you'd expect to edit a delay. Delay time, offset, feedback, mix amount, stereo width, etc. But we'll move on to the final effect in the chain, which is the compressor. And we're specifically concerned with the first parameter, which is source. This enables us to feed a sidechain signal into the compressor so that compression occurs depending on the volume of that external signal. You'll see when I touch the corresponding control that all of the audio from all four groups is available to us to use as the source for the sidechain. And I'm going to replicate the common dance music effect of sidechaining using the kick drum as the input source. So let's choose A1S1, which is the first sound slot in our first group, which is where we have our main kick sound. There are further controls such as adding gain to the sidechain signal or zoning in on a specific frequency. So now you'll clearly hear the shaker is no longer dominating the mix and is only pushing through once the kick drum has got out of the way, creating a nice subtle pumping and gluing effect. So that's how you simply set up a common technique from within the parameters section of machine.